Okay, this is Justin with Targeting Alpha back with another video. Today's video is gonna be on the indicator RSI, which stands for Relative Strength Index. The RSI is a momentum indicator, and it's an indicator that I use pretty much for all my trades. I think it's a, an important indicator that a lot of traders use too, so that's the thing. When you guys are picking out what indicators to use, these most of these indicators are a laggard to the market. They kind of represent what have, has already happened. So <clears throat> none of them are really going to tell you the future. But <clears throat> if you can get an indicator that is used by many traders and use it in a similar way, then it improves your ability for success in your trade because... All the stock market really is, is about price discovery and the psychology of traders. You know, one trader's deciding when to sell a stock and when a stock is going to be purchased by another trader. And that develops, a, you know, the chart and the price movement, price action for, you know, the ability to, you know, basically determine uh, what the correct pricing of said stock is going to be. And with the amount of traders that use RSI, uh, it can be a good indicator that you should have in your toolbox to uh, be able to use to pick out the correct trends um, of what your stock is going to do. It helps for entries and exits of the stock. And, um, you know, I do want to start by saying, you know, do your own due diligence, use the indicators that you feel are good, and don't take any of my. Um, thoughts or opinions as you know me telling you what to trade or what not to trade you got to form your own opinion on this stuff and if uh, you're going to get into a trade and you don't understand it uh, then and it's just because someone else told you to then you need to go back to the drawing board and, and develop a plan of your own but I'm just going to outline how I use RSI on a daily basis now I'm going to break all these stocks down on a daily chart, but the nice thing about RSI is it does transfer over to your shorter time frames like your hourly charts, your five minute charts, and even your minute charts. And some of the strategies that I use here and will outline, you can kind of use those same types of strategies on a shorter time frame but for the purpose of this video I'm going to use a daily stock or a daily chart so the first stock I wanted to outline is going to be this ATKR so uh, wait so first if you don't have RSI on your chart the way that you'll get that is by going to your studies here typing in RSI double clicking it or selecting it and then add selected and you'll add it to this lower portion of your studies and then hit apply and then OK. And that's going to bring up the RSI at the bottom of your chart here. Now, the 30 and the 70 are the ranges that represent oversold under 30 and overbought over 70. And it's not as simple as, OK, buy a stock when it goes under 30 because it's oversold uh, there's a lot of different variables to this so I'll just outline some stuff here so if you're looking at a key TKR you can see here on this day is when it pushed down into your oversold territory so and then you can see that it did make a nice run up but what we're looking at here is for a type of divergence in the RSI. So as you can see here, this stock turned over and it made a lower low. But the momentum or RSI of the stock made a higher low. So as you can see, after it that made that higher low on the RSI and a lower low on the daily, it then pushed up into an uptrend from a downtrend. 
Now, the other thing you want to look at is, you know, you want to draw your trend line. So you have a trend line here. As you can see, it broke out over that trend line and signaled an uptrend on the daily. Now, it's not just as easy as that. Um, many traders will just use a divergence pattern. And yes, it does work a lot of the time. The only thing is, is I like to line up my divergent patterns with other indicators as well. So anytime you can get confluence with an indicator, with another indicator, or a trend line, or a, um, a moving average, or just any other thing that you're using as an indicator, if you can get both those things that are telling you to buy, or even three or four things telling you to buy, that just strengthens your probability of it being a winning trade. So <clears throat> how I would look at this is if you br brought this out on to a, let's go to a, a two year daily here. You can see here, there's a pretty good support that it bounced off right here. And there's not, I mean, you could say that right here there's some support, but this was kind of your bottom where it went into oversold territory and then it pushed its way back up. So in my video on time frames, I kind of show how I break down a chart starting with the weekly moving inward. So I would recommend watching that video too, as well as if you're um, looking for how I kind of uh, do technical analysis on a stock and what time frames I use and how I use them. But as you can see here, moving back into this period that we were talking about, so it went oversold. It you know came came out of the oversold back into oversold, but it so number one, it's oversold still. Number two, it's made a lower low. And number three, it's outside of these Bollinger Bands, which indicate that there's going to be a pop. And it bounced off of this strong support line. So if you were watching this on this green candle day, you saw the day before it bounced, it opened up, it didn't sell off anymore, and it started to make its move back up. It's showing that RSI divergence. And then, <clears throat> as you can see here, getting to the oversold area up here, most traders would say, oh, okay, this would be a good place to sell this stock, which in this case it was. I mean, it really made a strong sell candle here on the daily. And it did push into the overbought area which would signal a sell. But I just want to point out something here. You can also use RSI as a trend. As you can see, if you draw a trend line here, it's bounced several times off of that. And you have your shorter trend line here on your daily chart. As you can see, when it breaks down this trend and it breaks down this trend, it starts to sell off. So that would be an, would have been a good position to open up a short or to finally take your profit on this move from here to here. Now, as you can see with trend lines too, it did almost reach over sold here, but you did see a strong pop off of this bottom trend line which would have been a good place to cover had you shorted here. Moving on to the next one is BOOT. Go ahead and back this out here. So here's one that went into oversold it then made a new low with a higher RSI. 
and it also pushed outside of the Bollinger Band here. Now, the reason that I would not have taken this trade as an example is there's not really any support here. Your next, your support would have been this 1680 area here, which it broke down and really doesn't have much support down till the the eight dollar ten dollar eight to ten dollar range so now this trade did work out off of just the divergence but it wouldn't have been enough for me to to take this trade just because it didn't really have any support here i mean maybe a a slight pivot in that area now over here but just as an example of how it can still work out sometimes with the divergence pattern here without lining up with other indicators but for me I think the more you can get them to to show congruence with each other the better let me head over here to BRY Now this is an example of not a divergence but just a very strong sell off and oversold. It actually pushed down below the 20 oversold which anytime there is a oversold of 20 then you can pretty much assure yourself that there will be some type of rebound soon. But I wanted to to show this as it did have some support here that it bounced off of so that may have been a place to take a trade moving forward to this over here you can see it then going oversold again and holding that support in the 786 range so as you can see here, there is a slight divergence here. It's basically made a double bottom with a higher RSI. It's oversold and it's at a strong support area that's already put in here. Uh, moving along here to CLDR, Cloudera. Uh, this will be an example of an RSI pattern so sometimes you will get a flattening of the stock so you will have an area of support where it double bottoms so it doesn't necessarily make a lower low but it did push out of the outside of the Bollinger Band here it is showing a divergence on your RSI and then it's pushing back up into the middle range of this RSI <clears throat> now a good place to have potentially played this stock would have been the break of this resistance area right here at 601 as you can see, it broke out pretty strong out of that resistance area that it had been holding there for several weeks. Now, the, the true reason why I picked this stock is you can also use RSI to signal your exits from a trade. Now, this did not show necessarily a divergence of the RSI but as you can see, it pushed into the extremely overbought range, which is over 80. Actually up to 86, 87 on the RSI for overbought. Now, for me, if there was nothing else besides that, 
it wouldn't necessarily signal to me that this would be a time to exit your long trade or to take necessarily a short position. But as you can see, it is running into some resistance here at your 200 day moving average on the daily. And it's rejecting off of that pretty nice. So when you saw that push up into there, it's looking like it's oversold or sorry, overbought. It's struggling to break through that 200, backing it up a little bit here. You can see that it's got some resistance overhead too as well in the $10 range. So you're already at 967. You got an oversold, or I'm sorry, overbought on the daily. A rejection off the 20, a strong overhead resistance. So this would be a good signal to either sell the position you took long here or to open up a short position here as well. Uh, next up is NVIDIA. Now NVIDIA, I wanted to look at on a daily when it made its high. So as you can see here, let me zoom in here a little bit on this. This stock made its high here at 20 or 285 when it went oversold on the RSI. It pulled back and then broke its downtrend to the upside. Now this is actually one that I was able to call out. You can see here in the daily, it really pushed outside of the Bollinger Bands here, which if you don't know trading with Bollinger Bands, I will do a video on that at some point in the future. But it's just another indicator that I use anytime you have a stock that pushes outside of these Bollinger Bands on a daily chart, it usually signals that it's either getting ready to reverse to the upside or reverse to the downside. So here you have two indicators. Number one, it's showing a divergence here. On the daily. So the RSI is making a lower high. The stock is making a higher high and outside of the Bollinger Band. So uh, this would be a good place to take off your long position on NVIDIA or to test an, an open of a short position. And how I would particularly do that would be to uh, take a long position somewhere outside of this Bollinger Band. Or sorry, a short position outside of this Bollinger Band and then set my stop at the high which would have been 29 or 292.76 as you can see it did continue to break down it did go oversold continue to get more oversold and more oversold so this was would have been a very strong short now you can go in a little bit to like a four hour chart and a lot of times that will show you the moves a little differently. Let me see if I can. Oh, this is a 180 day, four hour chart. Let me just look at it and see if I can spot any divergences here.
So here's an example of a divergence on the four hour chart. You have an oversold here, or overbought here, and an overbought here. This overbought is at a higher price level and a lower level for the RSI. It also has pushed up outside of the Bollinger Band on the four hour chart. So this would be a position where you would maybe short the stock here or, you know, take off your long position. All right, headed back over here to the daily chart here. Next one is RKDA. Now, <clears throat> let me say that when you have these low float runners, it's very difficult to step in front of these things with a short position. I mean, that's the whole reason why these things run up to crazy levels in the first place is because you have people buying and people sh saying, I'm going to short, it's overvalued. And then it, the shorts just continue to get squeezed out of their positions and have to buy to cover, which pushes it up further and causes more shorts to cover. And it's just kind of a, a, a snowball effect uh, once these low float runners really get going. Uh, they it's it's really hard to step in front of them with a short position because I mean you can do your best to but I do recommend if you're going to short some like a, a low float runner stock like this that you do use very tight risk management so I would not necessarily take a large position in a swing trade that I'm going overnight because sometimes these things can just open up and get squeezed overnight and then you're at a position where you know do you take a, a heavy loss or try to ride it out and you know you can see these become multi-day runners like for example uh, Beyond Meat, Tilray, several multi-day multi-week runners that can really crush your account so i say that with um you know regards to these low float runners uh, you know taking a short position can be tricky but they can be done so looking at this stock if you pull this out on a daily you can see has somewhat of a resistance level that it really sold off from here. So that means there was a, a seller here with a large order or a large amount of sellers ready to sell this stock at this 1037 area and it pushed up and it just got oversold back down to under a dollar. So, you know, charting this Had you played a long position here on like a morning gap and you know break over the morning high, which will I'm going to go through a video on uh, trading gap plays, uh, so stocks that do gap up in the morning. But as you can see here on this RSI, you pushed into extremely overbought on this candle here. You had a pullback and then pushing up further right into this resistance area. You see a divergence here. Now, this is a small divergence, but it is outside of the Bollinger Band. It is kind of rejecting it pushed up through that resistance level but it's now breaking down under so at this level here on the on the uh, the chart I would have maybe not stepped in front of it with a short position 
but certainly if I was long from the two three dollar range here this would have been a good enough signal for me divergence on the daily showing that resistance and outside the Bollinger Bands that it could be due for a slight pullback and it did now moving forward you see another run up into the resistance and now you're seeing another divergence pattern here present itself so for me if I were gonna open a short position this would be probably where I would look at it now it looks like this stock closed pretty close to its highs on that day so on my short position I probably would have waited till the next day to kind of see what it did and it looked like it did open up lower and that would kind of signal to me that this thing is going to roll over it had started to reject it and anytime you get a stock that pushes outside of the Bollinger Bands comes back inside and then pushes to a higher high and it did not push into the Bollinger Band or outside of the Bollinger Band that is another somewhat of a divergence when you're talking about Bollinger Band so uh, this would have signaled to me if you're long definitely sell or a good place to open up a short position uh, the next stock we'll look at is uh, Zillow Z so you can see this is a very strong now this has not played out yet uh, this was actually called out to me by a friend of mine as a, a potential play and looking at it I can see what he's seeing here so you're getting into the oversold range on the daily you're starting to see a strong divergence on the RSI at the same time as seeing a downtrend of the stock so as the stock is making lower lows your RSI is making higher highs now this is a perfect example of where just because it makes a lower low and a higher high or a higher low on the RSI does not necessarily signal that it's going to move up. Now it did move up momentarily, but if you're looking to swing trade this stock, then you can see here that it continued its downtrend and down further. Now bring this out to a daily chart, or let's even go to a let's see what a weekly looks like. You can see here that it does have some support in this area. So as this thing is moving down and showing your divergence pattern on the RSI, it's also at support or near support rather. And it's also, let me point out another chart pattern to look at anytime you can get a rounding of the stock now to complete this pattern would be it rounding up to the upside here but anytime you see this in a chart whether it's on the upside you see a, a rounding over of the stock or a rounding bottom play that can signal that it's building good support here now, the way that I would trade this is it's created itself a nice little trading range here. So as you can see, it has a strong resistance here at 3054 area that it's tapped off of several times and a pretty good support here of 2885. So you could either play this off of this 2885 with a very tight stop 
selling at that 3054 range if it does not break. Or probably the better thing to do would be to play a break of this 3054 range. You know, you can see the pattern of RSI is the momentum is up trending. It's basing out. It's got a nice trading range. If it does get to this 3054 area, it's going to be over this um, 20 uh, moving average resistance, which as you pull back on a daily chart here, you can see that it's had some resistance. It, it basically uh, pulled off of that resistance area right there, close to the 20 EMA. So it would signal you getting up over that 20 EMA. So yeah, I would play this um, over the 3054 area. Now, <clears throat> a lot of times what you guys will see with these uh, range breakouts is either a move straight up or sometimes you'll get a nice pop into the next resistance area. So looking at this chart, that I would assume would be this 33 range. So if you miss this move, To the upside here a lot of times it'll push up into this resi next resistance area and then it'll pull back and pivot off of that trading range so you can see if it pushes up here pulls back and starts to pop back up off of that 54 then it's even a stronger area to enter into so that is that. Let me see if there's any more here on this chart. So you have uh, your S&P 500 futures, your ES futures. The other thing you can do too is you can look at past reactions to the RSI. So that is one thing I wanted to kind of show here that when this went over sold on the daily it had a strong sell-off when it went over sold on the daily pretty soon it had a a strong sell-off now this this was took several days to develop into a good sell-off but I just wanted to point out that you can look at these um, at how the stock reacts to st certain stuff because that's really what you're looking for guys is how that stock reacted in the past to the indicators that you're you're looking at and the indicators that you're trading because other traders are going to see that same thing they're going to see oh this in the past when it went over bought it sold off when it went over sold it it went up so you know, that is the best thing I can tell you guys besides just getting confluence of indicators is a, a past history of these indicators. So you can see here on the S&P, you know, every time it's gone under this 200 day moving average, it's popped back up. Now, that's not to say that the next time under this doesn't just roll over into a bear market, but that's what you're trying to do is, is to look at probabilities, you know, playing proper risk management with these trades. So, um, you know, no trader is right. Even 80% of the time, anybody that tells you that they're right 90% of the time, or my strategy will win you 85% of the time they're probably lying to you to try to sell you some type of course. So it's, but it is about probabilities. It's about being right more than you're wrong. And as long as you maintain proper risk management, which I'm going to do a video on risk management in the future, but the gist of it is, is not taking heavy loss. 
not becoming a bag holder of a stock, not just waiting around and trying to hope that this stock is finally going to turn around. So um, not to say that you can never be down in a position on a stock, but there needs to be a certain point in time where you cut your loss. So if you were going to trade this breakdown of this 200 moving average, there needs to be a point in your mind, whether it be this trend line here that you play off of, that if it breaks down below that, that, you know, I'm going to get out, you know, it, it was a loss, you know, I did my best. So, um, now this one did present a strong divergence here. So you had it pushed to all time highs here. It also pushed outside of the Bollinger band on this day. And on the RSI, it went from oversold and it put in a divergence on the daily. So this was a short position that I caught. And I believe I went short at the break of this trend. about the $3,000 range. Now, I was actually down on this position a good bit, but my stop was around the 3020 range. And that's another good point to bring up. So if you are getting into a trade a little late, let's say that you wanted to make sure that it confirmed itself, Sometimes it's never a bad thing to start with a smaller position size so that, you know, there were, this was trading in a big range. You know, when it finally broke down this, I mean, I didn't do it, but, you know, when it hit this Bollinger Band down here, maybe it would have been a good p place to take off some of your position. And then as it pushes back up here and shows some more strength in the cell, you can add always add back to your position. I mean, especially now that we are in a, the time of zero commission trading, before you were always struggling with, oh, well, if I size into a position here, you know, add 25% of my position size here and there, by the end of it all, you know, you're eight, nine, ten trades into it, and you've ate into your potential profit with a lot of commission charge. So it was always a battle of, you know, trying to take as least amount of trades for the maximum amount of profit as you as you could. But with zero commission trading, that's pretty much gone. So, you know, if you're seeing one of these patterns set up doesn't necessarily mean that you have to take a full-on 100% position. Take the position you were thinking about trading and take a 25% position. If it, you know, rolls over a little bit, you know, you can always average down a little bit. Now, don't get in the habit of continuing to average down in a stock that's rolling over and, and breaking all its supports and showing a downtrend, but at least it allows you to, you know, with a smaller position to have a, a larger, um, stop area without taking as hefty of a loss. Cause you can always, as it heads back up and starts to, you know, break resistance, you can always add to that position. So, you know, that is how I use RSI to trade and, um, you know, keep in mind again, Always try to get it to line up with other indicators, other strategies, other support, resistance areas, because that's just going to make it better. Don't just say, oh, it's oversold here. I'm going to buy. You know, 
get it to line up with some of your other strategies and really work it into your your trading plan because like I said a lot of traders use RSI and it is a an indicator that um, will be right a lot so especially when you catch these strong divergences here now I'm sure there's better examples that I could have pulled up here this was just me in the morning time I I try to scan through and and pull up some potential uh, you know stocks where you know it worked out uh, for the benefit but it doesn't always work out keep that in mind so uh, good luck on your trading guys uh, today and uh, if you do like this video uh, give me a thumbs up please it really helps uh, YouTube get my videos in front of more people also subscribe to my channel uh, this is the first of the indicator series for RSI I will be doing other uh, videos on other indicators that I use and uh, the strategies behind those um, but I appreciate you guys uh, listening here and uh, again have a good day of trading